All right, today we're gonna look at how you might track sharks. Look at that. So we're looking at how they make floats, how they attach them to the sharks, and then how they collect them later. And to do all this, I want to introduce you to Dr. Nick Whitney. She came home. Again, accelerometer tags. The data are stored on this tag, and we have to get the tag back in order to get the data. That might be possible if you're studying something like a nesting sea turtle that's gonna come back on shore, or a sea lion that's gonna haul out on the beach. So far, none of our sharks have volunteered to return the tags to us. So we've had to come up with a way to actually get the tags back off the sharks. And we do that using this radio transmitter, which we pair with the accelerometer, and that allows us to find the thing at the surface, but in order to put these things together, we have to have a float where the accelerometer can slide in here and the radio transmitter can slide in the top of it and you end up with our final product, which is a complete tag float package. This is something that can go on the shark's fin. The device is attached to the fin with a strap and a galvanic time release. This thing starts corroding in seawater as soon as it gets wet and eventually it allows the whole strap to come off and the tag releases from the shark's fin and floats up to the surface. And once it hits the surface, this radio transmitter starts sending out a signal that we can hear from up to about 10 miles away. So we cruise around in a boat with an antenna listening for this. Eventually we hear the signal, the ping, and we zero in on it and pick it up at the surface. So when Nick describes it, it does seem very simple. But I think the most interesting thing I found was that there was a lot of trial and error that went into designing this and we went through a whole series of failures. We keep our failures so we can learn from them. I don't think anyone really thought this was seriously gonna be a good design. Oh, here we go, the slipper model. Put it on a whale shark and never saw it again. This thing didn't float. Oh, that's a little ridiculous. <laughs> Nothing in here floats. You wanna try and get a progression? This gives you a little idea of the progression of how we started in the early days from this very slender hydrodynamic model that didn't float at all to various models that were slightly differently shaped and floated a little bit better, but not perfectly. Um, we finally figured out we had to add just a little bit more mass to the top part. And then here's our current design, which floats perfectly and uh, is also nice and hydrodynamic. And obviously making sure the tags float and then released from the sharks was only a small piece of unlocking the secret lives of these animals. Nick's team had to figure out a new way of recovering a lot of tags over a considerable area. The solution was a combination of fast boats and planes. So we're now headed offshore to recover some of the few shark tags that are still left floating out there that we couldn't find from the boat. Our typical pattern is to do this E search pattern, we go offshore about 40 or 50 miles and do a nice long listen offshore and then work our way back in and go back and forth to cover the areas that the boat could not cover. But I think it's still in front of us. We're getting closer to it. I think we're right about on top of it. So I'm just gonna plot this waypoint right now. I'm now I'm gonna call down to the boat and give Jack these numbers so he and Carissa can go and, and recover this tag. Since the plane can cover ground much faster than the boat can, we want to make sure we give them the best location possible so that they don't have to come out here and do a lot of searching. About 250 tags all together from our projects. We've done this. Our, our recovery rate is like around 95%, which is, which is pretty amazing. Some of them we have on for um, just a day overnight, and some of them we have on for several days. The message I took home after following Nick and his crew is simple. Understanding the life of sharks is all about figuring out new and ingenious techniques to study them. It's not easy, it comes with a lot of trial and error, and often requires a lot of man hours collecting and recording the data. But in the end, what they're finding will help us tremendously. You see, we want to coexist with these sharks, and knowing about their often secretive lives is really important. Oh, and you can see the see sharks. Shark right yep, yep. Wow. You got a problem with us, then you got a problem with every other shark researcher in the world. Hey, thanks for watching this short showing one way scientists study sharks. Now, if you want to see what Nick's team is actually finding out about these sharks, then stay tuned because this is just one video in a four part series looking at what shark researchers are doing today. Is this stuff here? It looks like baking powder or some other some other cooking device, but it's <laughs> it's eggs. <laughs> People who mix up the microspheres for us always, for some reason, have a lot of energy for the rest of the day. Anytime we want them to work late, we just have them mix the microspheres first. 